We are Lactimish people. We are people of the Northern Salish Sea. Welcome. We're glad you're all here at the Lummi Stomish grounds. With us, we have an announcement that we're gonna to make today. We're here on behalf of our relative, Scally Chuckdenot. Lummi tribal members are exercising our inherent right to file an intention to sue Sea Aquarium for the return repatriation of my daughter, our relative, Scally Lummi Nation over the last year and a half has made attempts to go to Sequarium, work with the owners, attempted to uh, work together on alternative solutions, uh, explained and tried to seek empathy from the owners on why this is so important, why it's necessary. We must go back to when they were taken. We must go to what is dear to us and if we have children, what does it mean to have a child taken away, put into circuit, a circus to do acts, prostituted out for profits with no say? She belongs to the Salish Sea, not to the Seaquarium. She belongs to her mother, not to the Seaquarium. We join in celebrating the knowledge that Scully Achtenot took a ties tribal name recently given to her by the Lummi Nation will come home to her Salish Sea. She has been held in unspeakably cruel conditions and treated like a profit center by her Sequarium owners. She is a sacred being, not a commodity, and she is a relative of ours. We continue to press Sequarium and its parent company through petitions, articles, documentaries, public events, and totem pole journeys, inviting them to be part of the solution and work with us. But we are prepared to sue. We have tried, others have tried from around the world to reach out to Sequarium. If we have to walk in the legal world in filing a suit in the Ninth Circuit under the Native American Indian Graves and Protection Repatriation Act, that's what we have to do. We are announcing today, July 27, 2019, on her special day, that Lummi tribal members who understand her to be part of their cultural patrimony will be filing a lawsuit to require Sequarium to return under the auspices of the Native American Graves and Repatriation Act. It is our hope that long before we secure our victory in the courts, Sequarium will see fit to do the right thing and meet with our inter-party delegation to negotiate the terms and conditions of her release. Lolita been held captive for so long. It's a concern that it, it concerns us as we share the same ocean. She has a tribe, she has a family, she has a sister. But we are one and we will stand in whatever way we can to show our support to make sure Lolita comes back home. Yes! Yes! The Venturano Shumash have built plank canoes for thousands of years. And I've learned over the years in my travels that ocean people are all connected. We are connected with our brothers from all around the world. Come back to your to your traditional ways, your traditional roots, the love of the earth, the love of the ocean, the love of all the fish. Bring back Lolita. Thank you for letting me be one of the witnesses. It's a great honor, and I thank the Lumi people. Asima. Thank you, Freddie, and thank you to the Lumi people for asking me to say a few words. We rely on the marine environment for our survival as a people and so as a culture, for our cultural purposes and all those things. And um, it sustained us for thousands of years, and our cousins from New Guinea have relied on the waters and the, their lands in a sustainable way for thousands of years as well. 
This is real. This is not a fantasy. This is a real relationship that's thousands of years old. I appreciate the courage of our uh, two leaders here from tribal citizen leaders here from Lummi. They've taken this bold step forward. Michigan. We've heard the message that she's been crying out over and over. Is anybody out there that can hear me? Anybody out there that can hear me? I want to go home. I want to go home. Anybody help me go home? I was standing on the shores over here and I get a call. The call says, I had a dream and vision last night. And in that dream and vision, there was hundreds of canoes in the water here. And they were all singing this one song in unison as the whale was being brought back to her traditional waters. As human beings, we come together, united with one heart and one mind, I swallow one. Each and every one of you are important. My hands are out to our, our creator today. Anything that affects one, affects the other. It is time to stand up. It is time to call upon our youth. It's time to call upon everyone to take a stand, and it's time for Tokatai, Lolita, our Kothalmachtin to come home. Lummi Nation is working with its friends and allies, such as the Orca Network, the Whale Sanctuary Project, Orca Wild, the Friends of the San Juans, the Sierra Club, and the faith-based community to provide her a sanctuary in her home waters for healing and for her reunion. We know it will be a moment of great and profound healing for her, for her mother, for the Elpod, for the southern resident Kilowell population, for the Salish Sea, and all its peoples. When she was being taken, my dad was on the beach in Penn Cove crying. That was his family. Every day we went back out there. Dad never slept. This is a global event today around the world for her. She calls out to her family every night singing her song. We're answering that. But because we're fighting in the white way in court, we are asking for contributions to our legal fund. If you would find it in your heart, whatever amount you can, to donate through sacredsea.org. The money will go to fight to bring her home. We can't say enough about the show of support here. We will bring her home and we will have another celebration when she's reunited. Thank you again, Heiska, for being here and Heiska for all our friends standing up until Lolita is home. We know you're watching from South Africa to London, to Sydney, Australia, to Seattle, to Washington, and right here at Lummi Nation, we thank you, ACM. She needs to come home. She will heal when she comes home. That's proven, it's in the veterinary literature. It's therapeutic for them to come to their native waters. So there is no reason not to do it that is real. We've always had a perfect location. Location is 90%. Of a, of a good plan for a sanctuary. They are water people. All the tribes here are water people. They know these orcas. They know them from millennia. So they know what they're talking about when they say we need to save them. So this is a wonderful day. Long past due. It was long past due when we started this over 20 years ago. Being a leader, any leader, you know, is not a position or title. It's an act or an example. I don't care where you are in the world, it, it really is. And, and, and with Lummi Nation and our, our, our uh, relatives, uh, the Quahomachton, Chief Salih tells a story about our relatives that live under the water, they're not blackfish, they're not killer whales, they're not animals, they're the, what we call the Quahomachton people. They're, what we consider the people that live under the water. This is our homeland. These airs, these waters, these riverways. It's up to us to help protect and speak out for our relatives that live under the water. They're dying. Look at poor Telequa, the mother. Who 
what good mother in, in her way as a life giver could not respect when seeing Tahlequah carry her baby for over a thousand miles and mourn for all those 17 days. So I applaud Raynell, more, Raynell Zuni and, and I applaud Eleanor Kinley for their good work as, as mothers because they are our warrior women. They are standing up because they also know that if we don't do it and stand together, then who's going to do it? The swisher, the boats on the water, the hollowed out cedars, the sons and the daughters, the rhythm of paddles caressing the water, the rhythm of paddles to come greet the orca. Remember the legend, the myth and the story, a long time ago when we witnessed the glory of thousands and thousands of whales swimming free. The orcas come home to the great Salish Sea. Welcome. We're glad you're all here at the Lummi Stomish grounds with us. We have an announcement that we're going to make today in conjunction with Skelly Taktanot, the uh, global uh, event that's happening around the world for her, prayers and support. Uh, but before we get started, we have some traditional work to do. I'm going to call Fred Lane forward. Thank you, Skila Hela. Now it's Siam and Estalacha. So he la quinis and attacho tikaya, Siam and Estalacha. So Kadab, so Kadab sent a snat. It is true, my heart is glad to see each and every one of you, from the youngest to the oldest, to be here. You are all witnesses of the words and the work that is going to take place here today, Siam. It is our custom and tradition to always stand up for those who cannot speak for themselves, like our relative at the Miami Sea Prison. It is true my heart is glad to be here amongst the hundreds of tribes represented from our relatives from Papua New Guinea to our relatives from Alaska and down to the Chumash in Southern California. My heart is glad to be here. We thank again each and every one of you for this breadth of time spending here with our new Lummi people, our Lactamish people. We are Lactamish people. We are people of the Northern Salish Sea. We call four witnesses Four witnesses to witness the words and the work that is about to take place here. Should anyone question the words and the work that is taking place here, these four witnesses will remember and stand up and say, I was there. I was there with the great Lactamish people at the Lummi Stamish grounds to witness this important announcement for our relative, Lolita Tokatai, or her Indian name, Skali Chachtanat. This time, our first witness, he's chairman of the Suquamish tribe, Suquamish, Washington. He's also the president of the affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians, Mr. Leonard Forsman, Leonard Forsman, President Forsman, Siam, 
Could you come and witness the words and the work that's going to take place here today, Siam? Gui, Gui is his Indian name, ACM. Chairman Watatlam, Jeremiah J. Julius, I'd like you to step forward and witness the words and the work that's going to take place here today, CM, ACM. Alan Salazar, Alan Salazar, please step forward to witness the words and the work that's going to take place here today. CMA, CM. Sitki Kadam, Sitki Kadam, CM and Ashalacha, call you forward to witness the words and the work that's going to take place here today, CM. CM and Ashalacha, Again, we're here on behalf of our relative, Scally Chuktanot. We're here to stand up, share a little bit of words, welcome our relatives and all of our friends here throughout the world. Thank you again, Heiska, for being here, and Heiska, for all our friends standing up until Lolita is home. We know you're watching from South Africa to London, to Sydney, Australia, to Seattle, to Washington, and right here at Lummi Nation, we thank you, ACM. We would ask anybody that can hear me, if you won't stand with the work that we're doing, to please join us behind the canoes, tribal, non-tribal, if you stand and support the return of Skelly Taktana, please stand with us. While we are here today, Ellie Kinley, Tomas, and myself, Skelehela, Lummi tribal members, are exercising our inherent right to file an intention to sue Sea Aquarium for the return repatriation of my daughter, our relative, Skelly Tuckton. This is a global event today around the world for her. But we chose this day to call out to her, to her mother, to her, her pod, all our relatives that live under the sea, we care. We're not going to stand by. We're going to take action. The intention to sue is a white way that we've had to go. We have tried, others have tried from around the world 
to reach out to Sequarium, to ask to meet with them so we can explain why she's important to us, who she is to us, that her family calls out to her. She calls out to her family every night singing her song. We're answering that. We are going to get her home. If we have to walk in the legal world and filing a suit in the Ninth Circuit under the Native American Indian Graves and Protection Repatriation Act, that's what we have to do. Yeah, yeah, come on. Hey. And I call upon my sister to share some words with you. We've been ignored for too long. We can't let her keep living where she's living in that small little pond. It's time for her to come back home and be with her family. Returning her back to the Salish Sea is just a small part of what our Salish Sea needs to heal. The Salish Sea is crying out to us. It needs our help. There's many things we need to do. Bringing her home, bringing her back to her family, bringing her back to us is just a small part of it. And it's unfortunate that this is the way we need to do it, but hopefully it's gonna get it done. Hopefully they're gonna listen, they're gonna respond, and we're gonna bring her home. Thank you for all being here. Dr. Kurt Russo will read a letter that's being read around the world in her honor. Mm. Greetings on the liberation of Skaliachtanat, also known as Lolita Day. We join in celebrating the knowledge that Skaliachtanat took a ties tribal name recently given to her by the Lummi Nation will come home to her Salish Sea. She has been held in unspeakably cruel conditions and treated like a profit center by her sequarium owners. She is a sacred being, not a commodity, and she is a relative of ours. We know that from our own history how it feels to have or to be a child stolen away from family. Skaliach Tanat must and will come home to be reunited at last with her mother, Roshan's son, and her relatives in the Elpod. She is not well and needs the healing of her home waters and the company of her mother, Ocean's son, now the matriarch of Elpod. We know it will be a moment of great and profound healing for her, for her mother, for the Elpod, for the southern resident Kilowell population, for the Salish Sea and all its peoples. The Lummi Nation is working with its friends and allies such as the Orca Network, the Whale Sanctuary Project, Orca Wild, the Friends of the San Juans, the Sierra Club, and the faith-based community to provide her a sanctuary in her home waters for healing and for her reunion. We have underway the Salish Sea campaign to ensure through ceremony and science that our family is fed, that the Salish Sea waters are restored and protected, and the salmon stocks are replenished. We will soon be convening a gathering of experts to put to rest Sequarium's repeated claims that bringing her home represents an unreasonable risk. And we continue to press Sequarium and its parent company through petitions, articles, documentaries, public events, and total pool journeys, inviting them to be part of the solution and work with us. But we are prepared to sue. We are announcing today, July 27, 2019, on her special day, that Lummi tribal members who understand her to be part of their cultural patrimony will be filing a lawsuit to require Sequarium to return under the auspices of the Native American Graves and Repatriation Act. We have had the case vetted by experts in the field and by legal scholars who are guiding us in shaping the legal remedy. It is our hope 
that long before we, res we secure our victory in the courts, Sequarium will see fit to do the right thing and meet with our inter-party delegation to negotiate the terms and conditions of her release. We are honored to have built a new alliance, built a new friendship with Papua New Guinea. And they have a spokesperson that is here to speak with you today. Gibson. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are from Papua New Guinea. We are representing uh, the youth tribe. And this issue is not a lot about the Sally Sea and the Pacific Ocean. You know, it could be Sally Sea or Pacific Ocean, we are all one. And Lolita been held captive for so long. It's a concern that it, it concerns us as we share the same ocean. Our ancestors have been going to the ocean for fishing. They use the ocean for as their to perform rituals and to do many things. And so we want to stand here and to give our support, to show our support to our new alliance, the Lamy tribe, and those people who are in charge of this case, that we are one and we will stand in whatever way we can to show our support to make sure Lolita comes back home. Yes! 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 She has a tribe. She has a family, she has a sister. And you could, you and I could feel that connection been cut away for so long. We will stand together and you have our support. We would ask with uh, anybody that's just joined us, if you wanna join and stand in support, please feel free to. Um, We'd like to know if there are any questions from the press. Jules here too. Specifically, this a, oh. it's just you two ladies. That, the email I read wasn't the tribe, but two individuals who are tribal members. Who exactly? Is, <coughs> that for me, Thank you for the question. Yes, it is two independent tribal women filing suit exercising our inherent right to bring her home. <coughs> Is this the first time that this act has been used in this way for a living creature? To our knowledge and in working with our, our team, yes, this would be historical. But that's what we do, whatever it takes. Any other questions? Eleanor, as a fisherwoman, growing up all your life on the Salish Sea with your late father, how important it is it for our relative, for us to coexist, to stand up for the rights of nature, those that don't have a voice? We do coex coexist. Um, without one, there's not another. What, what, it, what is ailing our family under the sea is also affecting us. We both need the same things. We both need salmon back to the levels of 1985 to be healthy and happy again. And by happy, I mean our relatives under the sea are spending so much time hunting, they have no time to, to frolic and play. All they are simply doing is searching for food. We are doing the same above the water. We're looking at a season this year where we're going to get two days of sockeye fishing. So if I'm only going to get two days, how much fish is out there for them also? So anything that affects one affects the other. We need a healthy Salish Sea so we can all be healthy again. Hey, Sam. Um, Fred. If you could come up and ask the witnesses to say a few words. See, I'm going to just would like to recognize Jewel James. He's one of the carvers. We brought ACM Sassiat. I just wanted to recognize you. 
all the good work you do with the totem pole journey and liberating Lolita and bringing the totem pole to the House of Two's Carvers. I just wanted to acknowledge you and Uncle Siki Kedem for the, the good work that you do to protect Mother Earth. At this time, we'll follow protocol. The witnesses are asked to come forward and share a few words with each and every one of you from the youngest to the oldest on our work that we're about to stand up for, ACM. Chairman. We, we. Uh, thank you, Freddie, and thank you to the Lummi people for asking me to say a few words. Uh, my name's Leonard Forsman, uh, ancestral name Gui, and um, I'm just here to uh, echo a lot of what was already said. Uh, the southern resident killer whales um, are salmon fishermen, just like the Lummi people are, just like my people from the Suquamish tribe are, um, just like all the people in the Northwest are. And uh, we rely on the marine environment for our survival as a people and so, as a culture, for our cultural purposes and all those things. And um, it sustained us for thousands of years and our cousins from New Guinea have relied on the waters and the, their lands in a sustainable way for thousands of years as well. So it's only important that we continue to hold these values up. And um, we are working very hard um, to try to um, address a lot of the things that the orcas are crying out for. Those are more food first, uh, less noise, less toxics, all these things. Um, less of vessel traffic, all these things that our fishermen have been asking for. So um, we are very grateful um, that uh, this is being brought to the attention of the world, and I appreciate that. Um, the Suquamish tribe has a strong connection uh, with the orca, with the southern resident killer whales, as you all may have remembered or heard about when they escorted our artifacts from our ancient winter village back from the University of Washington to our museum on our reservation. Um, the, orca, the orcas came out and followed the ferry across. So they demonstrated that recently in the last five years, uh, their connection to us in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a spiritual cultural commitment. And this is real. This is real. This is not a fantasy. This is a real relationship that's thousands of years old. And I'm just so grateful and honored to uh, be here in Lummi um, on this uh, canoe journey um, to be able to witness this um, ceremony and uh, the words that were said and uh, appreciate the courage of our uh, two leaders here from tribal citizen leaders here from Lummi they've taken this bold step forward. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here to witness this work of our leaders, to witness the courage that we've seen in the past and we're seeing again today from our tribal women, the givers of life for all of us. So thankful for all you do. Thankful for uh, being an example for these children. These children will be able to talk about this one day and say they were here to witness the courage to fight, to fight for what is necessary and what is right. Lummi Nation over the last year and a half has made attempts to go to Sequarium, work with the owners, attempted to uh, work together on alternative solutions, uh, explained and tried to seek empathy from the owners on why this is so important, why it's necessary. We must go back to when they were taken. We must go to what is dear to us. And if we have children, what does it mean to have a child taken away, put into circuit, a circus to do acts, prostituted out for profits with no say? That's what they represent here today. That's what we have represented uh, since the signing of the treaty, there's always been a battle for us. And uh, uh, this is just uh, one step in bringing her home. 
and uh, she belongs to the Salish Sea, not to the Sea Aquarium. She belongs to her mother, not to the Sea Aquarium. And I too echo the words of what was said before. We have to find and create the empathy needed to understand where we are coming from. As the chairman said, this isn't a fantasy. This isn't, uh, this is real. We have been one since time immemorial with the orcas, learning to fish with them, respecting the waters and being stewards of this Salish Sea and these lands and learning a lot from them. And when their numbers are dwindling to where they are today, when the salmon are disappearing before our eyes, when the rivers are empty of the salmon, which were once full, the ecosystem is collapsing. It is time to stand up. It is time to call upon our youth who have very strong voices and are not corrupted by what the normal is outside. They see it with common sense. It's time to call upon everyone to take a stand and it's time for Tokatai, Lolita, our Kothalmichten to come home. It's an honor to be here, Heishka and Heishka. Hamanat, Haku, my name is Alan Salazar. I'm a Venturenio <coughs> Tataviam elder, a Shumash traditional paddler and storyteller. I am honored to be included as one of the witnesses for this important day today. My family, my ancestors were brought into the San Fernando mission starting in 1799. They were enslaved and forced to build the mission. They were forced to be part of the slave labor force for 30, 40, 50 years. I have ancestors buried at the San Fernando Mission in a mass unmarked grave. Much like the blackfish that's being held against their will, my people were held against their will. Our land was taken from us. The Shumash are six distinct tribes and only one is federally recognized. The rest of us are fighting the battle to get our federal recognition. The Fernandino Tataviam are currently under review by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And we have to jump through all these legal hoops to prove that we're still here. I am here, right? The Venturenio Shumash have built plank canoes for thousands of years. We have fished along the coast of Southern California for over 13,000 years in our plank canoes. Canoes that are made of boards that are lashed and tied together, glued with pine pitch and the asphaltum that naturally seeps up from the ground. And I've learned over the years in my travels that ocean people are all connected. We are connected with our brothers from all around the world. And I ask all the tribal people here today to reach out to each other, to Kisashwa, Kisashwa La, to all love, to Kisagantush, to all believe, to Kishka'a, to all be strong. And when I say all tribal people, on my mother's side, I have English and Portuguese. Those are tribal people. They've forgotten their tribal roots and their tribal beliefs. Those Italian tribal people, the Asian tribal people, come back to your, to your traditional ways, your traditional roots, the love of the earth, the love of the ocean, the love of all the fish. Bring back Lolita. Thank you for letting me be one of the witnesses. It's a great honor and I thank the Lumi people. Asima. Osiem, Nestella Josiem, Sitikatum Sonasnet. My hands are out to her 
our Creator today for bringing us all together in one heart and one mind today, standing united for a single cause to reach and out to bring one of our own home. This is a very, very powerful day for all of us as our <coughs> brothers and sisters that have traveled to stand unite, united with us today saying hi Scott, thanking you because we are all part of this mother our earth that feeds us and takes care of us it's been put on us to watch over for those that cannot speak for themselves at this day to reach out and answer the cries of this one that's been in prison for so long in 49 years down in this aquarium We've heard the message that she's been crying out over and over. Is anybody out there that can hear me? Anybody out there that can hear me? I want to go home. I want to go home. Anybody help me go home? There was a 14-year-old Down syndrome girl out of New York that picked up on that message. In that innocent impurity of her soul and spirit, she was able to read and understand what that whale was crying out. And she had the ability to reach across and project that message out. And there was a, a dreamer and a receiver out in the San Juan Island back in 2013 that picked up on that message and brought that message forward to us in 2015. For two years, she carried that message. That opened up the door for us to understand how important that these beings are that they are capable of reaching out to the two-legged human beings here and saying we need help we need help just like the whale last year Telequal, for 17 days she cried to the world look what's happening to us our babies are dying do you care do you care what's happening to us here do you understand it's up to you to help turn this around. So as human beings, we come together, united with one heart and one mind, I swallow one. That came from a minky whale that passed upon our beaches here back in the 90s. She left a song with us. And that song meant to stand with one heart and one mind. And it's very real, very real. So I can't thank each and every one of you enough to stand in United here today and understanding the cry of the world. Those that are under the sea have been crying out for a long time and we couldn't hear their voice. Now we hear their voice. Understand the cry. Do something. You as individuals, each and every one of you that are here, each and every one of you across this vast Turtle Island, it's your responsibility to take your piece of that puzzle and come forward and add it to our picture. Each and every one of you are important. Each and every one of you are here for a reason. It's by no mistake that these gatherings have been happening. There was a dream and vision that was relayed to us back in 2017. I was standing on the shores over here and I get a call. The call says, I had a dream and vision last night. And in that dream and vision, there was hundreds of canoes in the water here. And they're all singing this one song in unison as the whale was being brought back to her traditional waters. Hundreds of canoes. I told this one that was interpreting this, Jennifer says, oh, let me tell you what you just told me. What you told me that there's going to be a great uniting of all the peoples throughout all these waters, wherever these waters are, up and down this coast, clean into the Alaskan waters. That they're all going to come together in unison. Up into the estuaries and streams, up into the spawning bed areas, all those that live and depend upon the salmon up into the waters. It's important that we all come together. We all have that piece of the puzzle.
trying to save the salmon, we save the salmon, we save the orcas. We save the orcas, we save ourselves. We can pass something down to our children, isn't okay. children's children. Okay. Leave them something that they can go out there and gather and bring home to their table. It's up to each and every one of you. If, by the time we are long gone in dust, at least our great-grandchildren will have something to look back on. I said, I remember that day when they came together and stood as one, with one heart and one mind, and cried out to the world, let's do something. Let's make a difference. I'd swallow him. Oh, see him. Nice job. This concludes our message today. We are proud to be a part of the global action around the world for Skelly Takta to bring her home. I'm proud to stand with my sister to announce the legal action that we will take to bring her home. This is going to take funds to do this. So we are going to ask for your support, not just in love and prayers and in spirit, those are important too. But because we're fighting in the white way in court, we are asking for contributions to our legal fund. If you would find it in your heart, whatever amount you can, to donate through sacredseed.org, the money will go to fight to bring her home. We can't say enough about the show of support here. We will bring her home and we will have another celebration when she's reunited. We know this. We can have our we can have our witnesses. Uh, uh, come back as they make their way through and then if we can have our, our relatives all that gathered to come shake hands with our two women here our two women warriors who are going to take on this great cause so if all of our witnesses can stand here for a brief moment if we could just come through and, and shake their hand here today starting on this side come over there ACM ACM thank you You could share love. You know how Lummies love to hug. And our Suquamish relatives, you know, we're just, just thanking everyone. And thank you all for being here. Our relatives going to share a song here as we're making our way through just to carry the good spirit of what is taking place here today, CM. Okay, this song this is in honor of Lolita. It's called, the name of the song is Si'ichan. It means sibling. Si'ichan. It's about, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I would like to go home. The second part is, I'm halfway home. I feel so much better. And the third part is, I'm home. I shall dance. Oh, 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 sad. I want to go home. 
halfway through that song I could see her spirit coming home and it's because of all of you that have shared your strength with our JK and L pods oh, 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 oh. My dad was born on Orcas Island. His companions were only Orcas. And just to take a couple more seconds here. When our Lolita, excuse me if I don't say her Indian name right. Skelly Chachtanat. When she was being taken, my dad was on a beach in Penn Cove crying. That was his family. Every day we went back out there. Dad never slept. My dad was Kashanam. Roger Caillou. He never slept. All the time they were out there capturing and 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 murdering the young ones. I don't know how else to say that. But I would I appreciate everyone here. The spirit sees no color. The spirit sees only strength and support. Haishka.
Yes, and about a hundred other canoe families here from as far away as Papua New Guinea and many points in between, all up and down the coast and all over the Sailor Sea. This is a momentous event. This really takes it to a new level of dedication, of commitment, of resolution to bring her home and to save the Sailor Sea. And with this announcement, from this approach, it's never been done before. This, this tribal voice, this authentic voice of millennia as, as neighbors, as co-animals co in the Salish Sea. They are water people. All the tribes here are water people. Kurt's over there. They know these orcas. Uh, they know them somebody. from millennia. So oh. they know what they're talking about when they say we need to save them. So this is a wonderful day. It's high time Tokate came home. Isn't it? Yes, it's very much high time. Long past due. It was long past due when we started this over 20 years ago. <laughs> did, did you have any thoughts about the sanctuary itself? Because I know that's been getting a lot of different perspectives these days. Well, there are some plans in the works right now. And uh, we've always had a perfect location. Location is 90%. Of a, of a good plan for a sanctuary, and we've always had that on Orcas Island. There may be as good or maybe a better plan in the works. So either way, uh, it's a good plan, a good location, a good team, and there's never been any question in our minds from our research, from looking into the entire history, from all the interviews, all of the literature, it can be done safely. There is not a big risk. I mean, of course, walking across the street is a risk. You can never scientifically say zero, but there is no significant risk. And at what point would there be? There just isn't any place where there is any danger to her. And that's the point that we need to make for any of these plans to work, the public and 
the owners need to realize that the public knows that it can be done safely. They don't want to take a chance. Judges don't want to take a chance. And they've all been told that it's a terrible chance. It's so risky. Uh, and so their minds are confused and we're trying to clarify, no. Everything that we actually know says it's not risky. There is no real danger. She needs to come home. She will heal when she comes home. That's proven, it's in the veterinary literature. It's therapeutic for them to come to their native waters. So there is no reason not to do it that is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the uh, things I hear are uh, bacteria and you know, that sort of thing. And then also, the, oh, well, there's this um, notion going around that, that somehow SeaWorld and NOAA are being played, and it's really an attempt to. Those are the most popular things that yeah. I've come across. You know. Well, they aren't going to be involved in her, not in Toki, Tokitai, Skali Tanak. Uh, when she comes home, they aren't going to be involved. In, I mean, Noah will have to issue permits, but they'll look at what is presented to them and not what is in the media or comes out of the marine parks. And we know that, that it is safe, and yes, those uh, pathogens, the, the, there need to be safeguards. She needs to be examined. And the model for that was Keiko. Before he went to Iceland, a team of six veterinarians and pathologists examined him thoroughly. They couldn't lie because they'd have to all lie, and, they, and so it was a very good way to get the truth from them. Oh, hi, Holly. Hi, Rosie. How are you? Real good. Thank you so much. I need to get what she goes. I'm just okay. missing that. Yeah. Sorry for that little interlude. I haven't seen her for a long good. time. Yeah. Um, that it is perfectly safe and that the veterinarians will do the examination and show any dangerous pathogens and clear them up or, you know, worst case would be, okay, they may say oh, it shouldn't be done, but, I, uh, you know, the, aren't, the owners of the park certainly cannot say that. Nobody can say that. And they all said that about Keiko. He was examined. He got cleared completely. Icelandic veterinarians came to make sure they cleared him completely. There is no reason not to bring her home.